In this tutorial, we'll toggle the visibility of the grid view and the details view so that we only see one at a time. And rather than, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to actually put them inside a panel, each of them, and toggle the visibility on the panel so that way if we want to add any extra content, we can uh, deal with that too. So I'll grab a panel. And I'm going to call this panel Grid View. And we'll wrap this around the entire grid view. And then we'll stick another one around the Details view. This one panel, details view, okay now to our VB code, um, let's see normally we won't have, we would not have this page load section here so we'll add it in by going to the page events and then on this side we'll go to the load and inside here we'll say if not is post back then uh, panel details view dot visible equals false. So this will make our details view invisible when we first start. And now we will we'll, uh, look at our grid view event. And the event we're looking for here is um, our item selected. Maybe the selected index changed. So when this happens, when somebody selects something in the grid view, then we want to say at this point, we want the details view panel to be visible and the grid view panel dot visible to be false and then we'll say on the details view The event we're looking for is we'll actually do both of these. We'll say um, item deleted or item updated. We'll do the same code. We'll just switch these two. So we'll hide the details view show the grid view. So again, if we delete something or if we change something, so again that will be under the details view and then item updated. We'll copy this code. And then the last thing we want to do on both of these is if we change anything, we want to uh, say grid view. We want to um, do the data binding on the grid view to make it refresh. Okay, so that's basically it. We can test this out. You notice we only see the grid view, and then if we select something, we can edit this. Make that a big C, and then say update. Oops. Okay. Oh, and then 
uh, we're going to get this error message. So we have to, it tells us what to do here. Um, We can set the validate request equals false in the page directive. So I'll go take care of that. Um, actually, we'll do that in the next. We will do that in the next tutorial. So let's finish this one.